Adobe probably needs no introduction, probably needs no introduction, but I will give one anyway. Uh, original desktop publishing company, champions of Illustrator, Photoshop, and all the amazing creative tools that started the digital revolution, including Wired Magazine, as a matter of fact, which in its first several issues never mentioned the word internet. The revolution we were talking about was the desktop publishing revolution. Um, then went on to decide that, wow, actually this internet thing is interesting, and they acquired a little company called Macromedia, of which Kevin was one of the leaders. And they did the first really good WYSIWYG web editing tools and went on from there to glory and glory and are building just an amazing integrated machine to get from creation to eyeballs. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. But I first just wanted to start off by saying, you know, the conventional wisdom these days is that these things, tablets, touch, is the big, most amazing innovation. Would you agree with that? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for doing this with me, Spencer. It's a lot of fun, even though we've only slept for a few hours. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, touch is a huge revolution for creativity, and we're just starting on that journey right now. The, the experience of actually creating uh, directly with touch, I think, is it's as big a revolution as the mouse was um, for creativity. And it really requires a rethink of, of all the creative tools that people are using. Um, it, also, it also means that you can create wherever you are. So the mobility of, of these devices now mean that you don't, obviously you don't have to be at, like, go to a workstation to create something. You can be on your couch or you could be walking around. And so that's really driving a huge increase in the number of people who are expressing themselves creatively around the world. Um, so we have this like exponential growth now of people posting photos or drawing things or really uh, being creative in ways that we haven't seen before. You guys are known obviously as a pro tool company, um, but that's changing. I mean, right now, all kinds of people, Instagram would be a classic example. How do you deal with that, move, the move from pro to consumer? Yeah, this is, uh, it's a very exciting uh, change that's happening right now. So first of all, we're, we're really making sure that for, our, for pro creatives, that we really continue to make the best software out there for that. So and as touch is coming and tablets and other uh, ways to create, we need to make sure that you can still create pro work using these new devices. So, we're, so that itself is a really interesting journey. Uh, but then uh, more broad use, we're seeing more people adopting our creative software now on a kind of casual basis. And we've totally changed how you can get our software. So, so do you do a kind of a light version? I mean, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you think about take going from a pro tool to a consumer tool. Yeah, right. Um, well, we, we work on software specifically for kind of casual creative use. So we have uh, like Photoshop Touch, for example, um, which is uh, just a few dollars uh, that you can use to create on, on iOS or Android. Um, and then also we've got uh, basically a lot of photo management and editing applications right now. But those all connect to the to the um, to the pro app. So as you start getting more experience, you start getting more excited about about developing uh, your create creativity. Then you can kind of keep going up through the software and get get the best software around for for doing that and um, and really using the cloud to drive that interaction is is part of how we're connecting these worlds. So you can easily go from kind of casually sharing things to starting to really get pro with it. Um, flip it around from the, po the from the, not from the point of view of the creative person, but from the person looking at it, or you, the user, I guess, of the end product, how do you guys think about that? I mean, it's obviously much more complicated. You know, in the old days, you just photoshopped a picture, you got it in light, you, nice, you put it on the website, you didn't think about it anymore. Now somebody, a creative guy, has to actually think about working in an interface. So how do you guys think about that? Yeah, well, the, 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 this has been a big change where people are now embracing interactivity as well as just the static view of the content they're making. So how does someone actually interact with the content that you've made? How does it change as you're interacting with it? And then also, how does the content itself change across these devices? So, you know, there was like desktop publishing. In the early days, you could do a static design of something. You knew exactly the page size, and you could be super precise. But with mobile, um, all these screens are different sizes and resolutions. So the content needs to flow. It needs to adapt. And that, for creatives, is a is a very interesting challenge because a lot of creatives like precision in their design. They like total control over it. Um, and you just, you really aren't, you don't have total control in the new world here. And so you really have to introduce your intent with like how things will move and change as they go so on these is different that, screens. Is that like, if, is that in Photoshop now? Does Photoshop or is it in some larger thing that wraps around everything else? Yeah, right. Um, well, it's really a concept that's going across all the software. And um, the biggest one right now would be InDesign, which okay. is uh, like Wired uses InDesign for doing page layout. Um, and uh, most most of the magazines in the world now, and that integrates use all that. the other 
tools. Yeah, it's a composition composition tool, exactly. So you bring in images from Photoshop, illustrations from Illustrator, whatever whatever other software you're using, and then the form that, that comes together out of all of that is composed in InDesign. And then, uh, so the big change there is you can not only just publish to print, but you can create digital magazines uh, for tablets. So, um, and those would include interactive features. Absolutely, and... exactly. So now, um, so the software's evolved from being like this, you know, layout tool to really being an interactive design tool. Uh, so that's that's a that's a huge change for it. And then the next is really incorporating this sense of uh, dynamic design, responsive design, where you can attach things and say how big things should get and where the springs are. And that's to deal with the multiplicity of devices. Exactly, because otherwise you're you're designing the same page or the same content, um, you know, ten times, which isn't cost effective, it's not fun, um, it's a real productivity problem. So, so you really, instead of making 10 versions of something of different sizes and the portrait and landscape, uh, uh, just, you should just make one uh, and put the rules in for how it changes. That's the one frontier. One of the big debates that's still unresolved is uh, HTML5 versus native apps and proprietary, right. so where do you guys, I mean, you are a proprietary company, but where do you fall on that debate? Uh, well, Adobe does open stuff too. Uh, you know, uh, most successful companies are a blend of doing open work as well as some proprietary stuff. It's that blend. You know, Google does that. Or every, everyone has that blend. Um, uh, our open work, for example, is in WebKit, which is an open source runtime for uh, Chrome and for Safari uh, and, and for other projects. And so our engineers are contributing code to WebKit, which is open source. And then we work in the standards process at W3C to help advance which things. Which is the HTML5 process. Exactly. That's the standards body for so HTML. you're pro HTML5. Totally, yeah. And we're contributing th to things like CSS, which lets, lets, you, lets you do styling of how something looks. Cascading style sheets. Cascading style sheets, sheets exactly. And uh, we're doing things like like enabling text to run around graphics, which you know, for magazine publishing, it's a very common technique where you can have an image and the text kind of uh, goes to the edges of the image around it. Now, for a lot, I mean, at a magazine or any place, workflow is a is a kind of big issue. Um, how, which I think now, I mean, it used to be, you know, at, at an old, it used to be a serial kind of a process, and one guy did it, and next guy, next guy, next guy, girl, whatever. Is it more collaborative now? Is that how does how do you? Yeah. How do you do it? Absolutely. So, yeah, it used to, used to be like the creative process was kind of the solo experience where you were like by yourself looking at some software, crafting something. Um, and part of the experience is that way today, but it's really changing and it's very much an interactive experience both with the client uh, but with other creatives too. And those creatives may not just be in the uh, working area with you, they may be anywhere in the world. And so that's the big change that we're seeing now where people are starting to really um, collaborate with teams obviously via the cloud, which we're supporting now with something called Creative Cloud, where you can work with other people. Um, but so that's, that helps you work on getting comments and feedback on your work and getting it approved and whatever the process is that you're using. But the really cool thing is um, getting feedback from people that maybe you don't even know. Um, that's kind of the what, what's emerging now. And um, we, we're just Wait, bringing... How, how would that, in a professional environment or... Yeah, yeah. So like work in progress. You know, people share um, final form work where it's already, right. you know, the best they think it can be, and they'll share that for feedback, but really they want people to say that they really like it. We love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, uh, but then there's uh, sharing content that really is not done yet, and you really want authentic feedback, and that's that's the form that um, we're, we're really looking at supporting now. And we brought in a, a great leader and a team to work on this. Um, his name uh, is Scott Belsky, and he's actually he's speaking talking here later, in yeah. a couple hours, he'll be in this room. Um, and he, he does something called Behance, which is one of the, uh, well, it's the most popular site for creatives to really collaborate with each other like this. And they run things like the AIGA uh, portfolio, uh, RISD portfolio. And people are using this inside companies? Yeah, they use it inside, inside companies, um, and, um, and then also in uh, design schools and, and things like that. So it's a, it's a great way for creatives to be inspired by other people's work, but also get really helpful feedback on, on their work. Now, you guys have gone a really, I mean, this a lot of eyebrows raised when you bought Omniture, big, huge marketing advertising technology. Right. I mean, you essentially now have a complete beginning to end public publishers. I mean, is, is that level of integration, why did you go for that? Well, 
Yeah, well, when we when we started working um, on digital marketing and, and, and brought Omniture in, every, uh, most people were surprised that we had done that and didn't understand. And um, and it's uh, it's now been a couple of years, and, and now the results of that are starting to come out. And now it's a lot clearer, I think, um, what we're doing, which is really connecting the workflow that, that you were talking about beyond only just the creatives who are working on something, but a lot of creatives are working with marketing teams. Um, a lot of the creative content that's made is, is used uh, for marketing of one form or another. And so, um, so helping those teams work together is a huge opportunity for us. And so we're doing things like digital asset management between a creative on creative cloud with a marketing team using something called Marketing Cloud now. Mm -hmm. um, we've connected them together. But from marketing team, uh, there's a huge transformation happening where they're going from doing traditional marketing like running TV ads or print ads to doing digital marketing, right. which is you can totally instrument and you can really understand how effective that content is in ways you couldn't ever do before. I think what, what really kind of knocked people out though was that uh, it's not just any longer about creating the materials and exactly. then handing them off and having, it's actually got, it, it pushes it out it's, into the web, it's got the analytics, who's why. Yeah. Is that, it's the that, life of the content after you've made it. It's like, what happens after you make content? Yeah, well, it's publishing. I mean, you are, it right. is a, it is, it, exactly. it's, it's not a creation platform anymore. It's an actual publishing That's right, platform. that's right. Publishing and iteration, and it's like the live, it's the live experience of that content. So it goes all the way, and then once you do experience it, it goes back again iteratively to refine that content or change it based on that learning that you've had. It's like this is a now, virtuous conventionally cycle. that was done by different systems. You know, you kind of had one guy, they created the creative and then they yep. gave it to the media buyers. And exactly. Like, different systems. What's the, and what's the rationale for lumping it all into a... Uh, it's, it's, it's enabling all of these different players to work in ways they couldn't work before and much more quickly. Uh, you know, today, uh, or previously, people were using these multiple systems, but also they rarely interacted with each other in any sort of productive way. Uh, so it would be weeks uh, before you would understand how well something performed, perhaps months sometimes. You'd do a campaign and you know, months later you'd understand. So but, who's, who, who are we likely to have seen using this platform? Who's a typical uh, Audi, now? Uh, for example. Sorry? <laughs> Audi. Audi? Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of the major car manufacturers. Um, so in other words, when you see an Audi website, yep. that will have been it's, Adobe all the way through? Yep, it's delivered with uh, Adobe software. The content management is using Adobe's content management system, um, instrumented uh, with, with digital marketing, and of course using creat creative software to build it all. So, so brands use it, publishers? Publishers use it, yeah. Um, most of the publishers in the world are using our creative software now, which is terrific. And then they're starting to now look at using the digital marketing software. So the idea is to convert them to the whole package rather than just exactly. the, the Exactly, that's right. So the digital marketing thing for us is a huge opportunity. And, um, and the pace of work is changing. So as a marketer, you can't wait a few weeks to understand how well something's going, especially with social um, communication now, where you might in, in one day need to learn something and respond to it, or in hours. And you can't do that if you're like looking at a PowerPoint presentation two weeks later. You need, you need to know that right away. When we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you guys saw a touch coming several years ago and actually went to the mocked up working touch devices so that you could start. What are you mocking up now? What's the, <laughs> what's the next big thing? Yeah. Um, well, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, the touch, the touch device we mocked up was pretty fun because it was um, very large. Uh, that's the way we were able to do it. So we took a television set and we put uh, infrared sensors around it and basically pretended we had a, a giant iPad before iPads right. existed. Um, and uh, we were able to build all the software by experiencing it th that way. And we found that to be really productive because we can put ourselves in this future space and really understand the problems and start getting ahead of it. So when, when iPad came out, you know, the, in it, within that year, we were able to start doing digital publishing software. Um, so what we're, yeah, what we're doing now is, um, is well, we're, and some of these things may, may not come to be, but we're, we're playing with what, what does touch mean in a much larger context, um, where most of these touch devices right now are, are portable and relatively small. Um, they're going to get larger. Um, some of our um, higher end customers are already using fairly large touch screens on their desktop um, in order to do their work um, directly. But this is going to get bigger and bigger. So our, our view is that these touch screens are going to get quite large. Uh, even uh, we're mocking up a few things. One is a a giant drafting table, <laughs> um, which has a very large uh, touch screen on it, and it's actually on a drafting table base. And I, I think that that physical interaction is really interesting for creatives, and how do you use virtual tools like T-squares or, or real tools? But the other is editorial process. So, you know, how, how do you actually, when you look at, um, like, um, like Vogue, for example, with September Issue, there's, the, there's a great movie that shows uh, 
kind of how they do their editorial process, and you do this all the time too, right. um, where you basically see uh, the pages and the photography and all the content spread out in a very large board in front of you right. across a wall, and then you also have a table with a bunch of items on it, and it's a collaborative process in the room of people shaping the, right. the results. So how can we have that kind of shaping experience happen um, digitally? And so we, we're mocking that up right now. We actually have a room um, in our San Francisco office that we've set up, and it has a full wall of touch screens all across and a touch table, and you can actually throw objects from the table onto the, onto the wall, and you can throw things from That's the wall cool. down the wall. It's, it's a lot of fun. Multiple people can be doing it at the same the time. The end of thumbtacks. Yeah, it's totally, it's, it's, it's all digital thumbtacks and post-it notes. Short thumbtacks industry. It's a lot of fun, actually, yeah. So, um, so you know, when will that become cost-effective and, and available as TBD, but it's uh, going to be, I think it's going to happen and it's going to be a lot of fun. At um, CES this year, a lot of the buzz was about ultra-high resolution yes. screens. Well, what do you, where do you see that playing out? I'm super excited about that. We've been waiting for that piece to come in. Um, and uh, because when you, when you start working with large um, displays for touch, even HD displays, when you're close to them, you can see the pixels. And uh, for creative design, that's not great. Uh, seeing the pixels is uh, not, not high enough fidelity for doing the design work. And so when you look at 4K displays, which are four times the resolution of HD, um, you can then get uh, almost kind of people talk about retina displays. Right. You know, you can get super high res displays that are also large. And then that enables some of the use cases I was talking about with large interactive displays. So people look at it and say, hey, I can watch movies with high fidelity, and that's great. But I get excited about, wow, we can make drafting tables out of these. <laughs> so um, We've got qu questionability here. Uh, if anybody has any, just shoot up a hand. There we go. Hi. I was wondering about the CS, they also have like lead motion, which is 3D. Uh, yeah. Gestures and goggles in 3D. Yes. This is great opportunities for new user interfaces to Totally. Are you did everybody hear that uh, question about 3D and leap, how that plays? Leap motion and gestures, yeah. yeah when, how do you deal with that? Absolutely. Um, leap motion is great, by the way. We're playing with these devices right now. And um, leap motion is a sensor you can put in front of your monitor. It's a very small little box. And it detects your hand motion. So it's Kinect-like? It is, it is, but it's very localized to you sitting in front of a screen. Okay. And, um, and, the, and the resolution is extremely high. You can get like millimeter resolution. So you can do precision drawing with like uh, your finger uh, by pointing at the screen. So it's, it's like touch without having to actually touch the screen. Um, and it can detect all of your, your fingers and your gestures. So this is part of the natural kind of um, interaction revolution that's happening right now, where it's not just touch, but it's also voice and it's body language and it's uh, hand motion. And that's revolutionizing software right now. And that is, that is the frontier. Um, so we are absolutely playing with those things right now and working to see how we can embrace them in the creative process. And part of that will be just enabling them to connect to our software uh, and then seeing what our customers do with it. And we often use that as a way to explore the leading edge as some of our, we've got an incredibly creative customer community. So um, often you can look, look to what people are experimenting with and then say, ah, we can make this available to a much wider number of people. So, so we're in that experimental phase, but it's super fun. How about 3D stuff? Yeah, 3D is, uh, um, it's really, it's really interesting because it's, um, we support 3D today in our, in our software. Like Photoshop, you can bring 3D models in. And a lot of games or movies, are, are the 3D characters have been actually painted with Photoshop. Um, and uh, we're so doing that. Kind of just you press the button, 3D, and... Yeah, we just bring a 3D model in. You can spin it around, and then you can paint on it. Um, and the painting actually wraps onto the object, and you can uh, do texture mapping and things. But um, the thing is, actually creating those models, we found, is... Uh, quite challenging because you have a 2D screen and you're trying to make a 3D object and um, it requires a special person to really understand how to do that. Um, so authoring 3D content is hard. But now there's a boom in 3D models where there's libraries, many libraries of models now. And that I think is going to be part of the broader use of 3D is taking existing models and then shaping them and changing them. Um, and then of course 3D printing is a uh, a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's totally hobby experimental right now. And there's a 3D printer here, actually. Yeah. Um, and that, that's enabling, though, creatives to really get the physical representation of what their idea is um, before maybe it goes into like a formal manufacturing process. But um, it's really compelling, though, to be able to think of something and then get this actual object out of the uh, other side. So we're doing a lot of work on, on supporting that kind of uh, use of 3D. Yeah. Anybody else out there? Um, I would just, you know, I mean, the, 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 one of the big debates that goes on forever in technology is this integration versus best of breed. Yep. And obviously you guys have made a very large bet on integrating integration forever. 
how do you, how do you yeah. you're obviously not worried about somebody coming along with a better 3D thing than you have and I mean, what? Wow. Well, we're always worried. Yeah, I think, you know, it's like you have to, um, you can't, integration is really important because uh, people really benefit and want these things to work together so they can do their job really easily. So that's it's a key thing, but you can't over rely on integration. It's, it's a, a bit of a siren song where you think, well, I'll just integrate these things and they'll win through integration. Um, not sufficient. They, all, they also have to be the best in their spaces. And so you can't take the pressure off having the best imaging software or the best drawing software that also connects with these other things. Do you think the cloud has changed that dynamic? Um, well, I think there's a lot more things integrating with each other now, which is a really cool uh, new um, new experience, especially with APIs where other people can build off of your work. I think that that's hugely productive. Um, it, it's actually really helpful in keeping the pressure on to make sure the individual items are the best in their class, um, because now you can integrate with so many things, and and so many people can create new uh, creative, expressive applications, which we're seeing. You know, if you look at the number of touch-based applications that are coming out now for creativity. It's a revolution uh, for in, in creative work right now, um, which is terrific. So very motivating time. On that cheerful note, we are out of time. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank Spencer. You, Thank you.